This hunk of steel will break legs and dreams. Oh, this video is going to be controversial. Natural human nature says what we decide means that's the best. And we will fight and argue, especially online, to say and prove we have the best. Well, here, people, here is the best. Enter the Pro Pride hitch. I will look at this hitch compared to a few others on the market, as well as uh, the most close competition, which is the Hensley Arrow hitch. Why I did not go with the Hensley Arrow hitch. And also some basic overviews of hitching and kind of just a quick explanation of how this particular hitch works. Let's start off by making one thing clear. I paid for actually two Pro Pride hitches with my own money, over $3,000 roughly, for different trailers. So these were not given to me. Uh, I'm not sponsored by any way. Um, they're not telling me to do this. I'm doing it because I think it's useful information for everyone to have as um, they look to try to find answers to some of the questions. This is kind of a video that talks about questions I had when I was researching and hopefully this answers some of the stuff that I really can never find a video for. Let's start with some context. So our first hitch was a Fastway E2 years ago. Contrary to popular belief, this is not an equalizer hitch. Equalizer is a brand name. The Fastway E2 hitch simply did not perform very well. We got a lot of sway, a lot of movement, uh, despite my best attempts to set it up. So we moved to the True Equalizer brand, which is a four-point distribution hitch that many of you are very familiar with. This is a great hitch and one I would recommend as a second place uh, next to these pivot point projection hitches. The equalizer greatly enhanced the towing experience but we were still lacking so my research continued which led me to the evolution of my tow rigs and the hitch. We first started with the F-150 pulling a Rockwood camper using the Pro Pride hitch. This was a game changer. However, this particular truck was lacking on payload and other capacities, so I upgraded to an F-250, also thinking this would be the pinnacle of towing. This was not impressive. The ride was awful. The towing stability was marginal over the hitch, so I went back to a half-ton truck with a higher capacity over the previous red F-150. That's when I got my first of two Silverados. And then from there, as everyone knows the Silverado story, I am in my current F-150, also with our third camper. There's some background to where I've been to what leads me to our topic of today is the Hensley Hitch versus the Pro Pride Hitch. We're going to look at a handful of things here. We're going to look at build quality. We're going to look at things I researched and found. Um, and we're going to start with the welds here. Let's focus on... The hitch head with the welds, you can kind of see uh, these welds here, the quality of them, they're smooth, they're even. Just kind of pan around looking at the rest of the hitch, sorry it's a little dirty, um, but that's again, it's a used hitch. This isn't a brand new hitch by any means, but you can just kind of see the overall quality of the finish. Now let's take a peek at the Hensley Aero welds. So these are off the internet. Obviously you can argue um, they're pictures that people have issues with, so of course they're going to look bad. But here's some images pulled directly from Hensley Marketing. Also here's an image pulled directly off their website. You can see the weld quality on their Stinger bar. I'm not sure how this is acceptable to leave when you're paying this kind of money for a hitch. Since I brought it up, let's talk about the Stinger, which is the next point of one of the bigger differences. So ProPride has an adjustable Stinger here. That means you buy one and it can adjust to all the different vehicle uh, heights that your hitch is at. It can also tilt to give you more weight distribution capabilities. And one of the things Hensley told me when I was looking at their stuff is this is a major flaw in Pro Pride's design because it's extremely weak and it's completely unnecessary. However, literally every other weight distribution hitch and hitch 
on the market has some level of adjustable shank. You also lose the flexibility of adjusting it to dial in proper weight distribution. And if you need different sizes, Hensley does offer different offsets. However, you have to order those or send them back at your uh, cost for shipping, I do believe. The second area I found in my research that is the biggest difference is how it attaches to the trailer and locks the ball out from pivoting. ProPride uses a yoke system and that system goes back and connects to the trailer with a yoke tail and that keeps things locked in. Hensley's system needs to have holes drilled and screwed to the frame and then it also uses these tension brackets to help lock it out which I have read as prone to breaking. Again that's just internet. Uh, evidence. I have no personal experience with that, of course. The next reason I chose is the jack design. It's clean, it's simple, it sits on top of the frame, clamps on with a U-bolt, um, and it holds the spring bars by this hook. Now, um, I will point out that it's nothing is perfect, but ProPride has recognized that. These hooks have been prone to bending, but ProPride has come out with the next version of jacks called the V2. These jacks resolve the problem by eliminating the hooks and changing the, the lift structure, how it attaches to the spring bars. I have installed the V2s on some other hitches I've done for people and they are a really nice upgrade. ProPride does offer these as an upgrade option for current customers if they want to swap out their jacks. ProPride recognized they had a weak link in their design so they wanted to improve it to not have customers have issues. By contrast, Hensley has kept the same design as not evolved and resolved some of the issues that they have with some of their components. The last reason I chose is probably more opinionated than others, but I saw many photos online that had rusted and faded paint jobs on the hitches, and I did not want to have that on my hitch if I'm putting this kind of money down on it. Now I'm sure many of you can chime in and say your hitch is perfect and flawless. That is wonderful. I'm happy for you. But this wasn't uh, something I was willing to take a chance on. So those are the reasons I chose a ProPride over a Hensley hitch. And also why I believe they are a better product versus the Hensley offering. Now they both work. They both work great. They are both the superior product to a friction style hitch on the market so if you want to completely eliminate and prevent sway these are the hitches to go with over an equalizer or any of the other ones oh and one more pretty sweet thing this adds roughly a foot to your overall hitch so check this out tailgate can come down without rotating the jack Let's jump over and take a look at how one might go about hitching up. A lot of people think these look very intimidating. They think they look unnecessary, but I'll tell you what, I will race anybody hitching up one of these versus an equalizer hitch. I can pretty much get backed up and in, in just a matter of minutes. So you start out by putting the stinger into your truck and you back in and you have to align it with this uh, opening in the hitch receiver. This can be challenging for some people but with some practice and some various tricks um, it becomes very easy to do. Next thing you do is these over center latches you pull the pin and they pivot in like this then ProPride gives you a tool and I'm I know Henley, Hensley does as well. You slip the the wrench over here, it's just a three quarter inch wrench, you twist it and the over center latches pop it and then they suck that uh, stinger into the box opening. Now I've had it backed in where I've had a little bit of a gap before and that is fine because I can have it sticking out upwards of an inch, inch and a half. As long as I can get one of these uh, latches over I can actually use that wrench and kind of start sucking it in. I, I pull in half the side then I can go over to the other half um, and it sucks it in then you put these pins back in. Now they will be perfectly straight once they're latched into place since I didn't use the tool they're flared out a little bit but there's plenty of hitching videos online that you can go and check that out for yourself. The next thing you do is you will raise your jacks 
I use a drill. You do not use a driver. A driver can um, blow the shear pins inside these. Now I think the V2s may resolve that issue, I'm pretty sure, but uh, double check with ProPride to be sure. But I use a drill and you just simply insert it on there and the jack lifts up the hitch head. You can see it pivoting there. It's putting downward tension on the stinger, which results in adding weight distribution to your front axle. Now you do this for both sides. When you do a setup for this, you measure the front wheel well height, very similar to how you set up on their weight distribution hitches. And then you simply use the drill to raise or a wrench to raise the jacks up and that puts the weight on the front axle which then will adjust the fender height and it's very easy to adjust this on the fly too say you're driving down the road and something doesn't feel right your steering feels a little floaty simply pull over crank these up a little bit or down whichever way and you immediately have an instant uh, feel difference that's something you definitely cannot do with a friction hitch where you usually have to take out a few bolts and play with that well there you have it the reasons I chose the Pro Pride over the Hensley and why I think it's a better product. And just to calm everyone down, here's a fun happy dog.